Hello, I'm Corey Tanner with the Clemson Extension Horticulture Team, and with me here is Zach Snipes, agent down in Charleston County. And Zach, it looks like you bought us some plumbing contraption. What, what do we got going on here? Yeah, this uh, does not go in your bathroom. So. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, this right here is what we see a lot on a, um, a lot of small farms, even big farms. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of showing it here today to potentially um, encourage some homeowners to, to maybe invest in this type of um, set up. This is a um, irrigation system, but uh, more specifically, this is a Venturi fertigation system. Fertigation. Now that sounds kind of like fertilizer, kind of like irrigation. What does that mean? Exactly. So it's not a Latin term, but um, fertigation basically means putting fertilizer through your drip irrigation system. Okay. And so um, what this allows us to do is if we have an irrigation system set up, um, we can run liquid fertilizer through it and we can really dial in how much fertilizer we're using and when we use it. Um, and so we're a lot more efficient and effective at taking up fertilizer um, versus other methods like broadcasting fertilizer or side dressing, something like that. Okay, yep, so a lot of gardeners probably use liquid fertilizer in like a watering can. I call it the blue water yes. uh, method. Yep. Yep. Um, so you, I think a lot of people are probably familiar with that for maybe like house plants or vegetable transplants, mm -hmm. but how would this work in, in a landscape? Yeah, so if, if this is in a landscape or even a, a medium to a larger size garden, um, you can uh, basically hook this into your um, ir existing irrigation system. So your lines would come in here and they would exit there. Um, and then you would have this system. And what happens is uh, your irrigation water comes in here. And when you're not fertigating, because you're not always going to put fertilizer through the drip system, um, it would normally run through here and out into your lines. So, so this valve would be open. Correct. Okay. And that's just a gate valve, so it goes up and down. Mm -hmm. So we would leave that open. But if we wanted to run fertilizer, what we would do is we would close the gate valve here, which would then direct water here um, through here. Uh, we would open these two valves here. Mm -hmm. So now we have water going this way. Yep. And then this is the critical piece here. Okay. This is called a venturi. Um, and what happens is we have um, low pressure and then it comes down to a higher pressure. And what that does is it creates a suction for us. Right. And so we're okay. able to use a liquid fertilizer in a five gallon bucket. And then we put our tube in there and it actually creates a vacuum and will suck up the liquid fertilizer and inject it into our drip system. That is really cool. So basically this Venturi, it kind of squeezes the water in so you get like a, a fast jet of water in there. Is that right? And then that pulls Correct. the suction. It pulls the suction and then it mixes. Um, you have this little dial here that kind of can control how much it's sucking up. Okay. Um, and it injects it in the water. And as you see, there's lots of bins. Um, there's lots of filters that it goes through. So as, in that process, it's getting mixed up okay. in the water. And so when it goes out to your plants, you have pretty much a, a homogenous um, a liquid solution that's going out to your okay. plants. And how do you know like how much fertilizer is going in? Yes, yeah, really good question. So, you know, the whole the whole reason for doing this is we really want to dial in how much fertilizer we're using mm -hmm. and to not over fertilize. Okay. Um, so we've created a drip fertigation app on Clemson's website. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, you, you just put in your crop um, from a selection, you put in the type of fertilizer that you're using, um, and then you put in your acreage or your how many row feet you're mm -hmm. fertilizing, and it tells you exactly how many gallons or ounces of this product to use um, in an irrigation event. Okay. Um, so we can really dial that in. Um, so it's very, very efficient way of feeding our plants. The, another cool thing about this, is we're, we're putting the right amount of fertilizer out when we need it. Okay. So as you know, as plants get bigger, they have more fertility requirements. Right. So we can spoon feed our plants a little along, and so they're never without fertilizer in and this so process. Basically with the app, what the way you would use that is you would use that to determine how long the irrigation runs to determine, so you'd measure out your, your fertilizer. Correct. And basically run the water until that fertilizer is gone. Correct. Yep. And so what we tell people, depending on your soil type, mm -hmm. um, you have to charge the system. So okay. what you would want to do is you want to uh, turn your irrigation system on for 10, 15 minutes to get the soil wet to okay. make sure the lines are charged. 
then you would want to fertilize with your fertilizer for about 15 minutes. Okay. And then once your fertilizer is completely empty from your bucket, right. then you would close these valves mm -hmm. like so. And then you'd open your gate valve back up and then you would run fertilizer or water through the system to flush the fertilizer out. Because the last thing we want to do is leave fertilizer right. in those two or okay. those lines. If we do that, it can precipitate out and clog our emitters on our oh, drip system. Yeah, that's not good. No, it's so, not good. So if I didn't use drip irrigation, could I use this with like a sprinkler? Yes. Yes. Okay. You could, you could do that. Um, and it would be the same process, except instead of a drip irrigation, it would be a sprinkler okay. at the end. But there possibly more waste. Correct. Doing it that way, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. So drip irrigation, um, especially for flowers and ornamentals and vegetables, is going to be a lot more efficient. Okay. Um, Water-wise, and then fertility-wise as well. We we really want to put the water where the plants can take it up. Right. Because uh, we don't want to fertilize weeds. Right. So exactly. Um, another thing that I want to talk about is the type of fertilizer that we use mm -hmm. in these systems. Uh, we want to make sure that we're using fertilizer that's soluble. Okay. Water soluble, because again, the last thing we want to do is clog up those emitters, and then we have a huge right. nightmare uh, maintenance problem. Um, so th what I like to do is use ones um, that are in, you know NPK or three right. you know, nitrogen, phosphorus, right. potassium. We want to make sure that there's no phosphorus. Okay. Um, we have plenty of phosphorus in our soils m most of the time in South Carolina, um, and phosphorus also can precipitate out with right. some of the water that we use. Mm -hmm. um, and so we don't want it forming basically rocks or crystals right. in our drip system. So, how, so how would they know looking at that label that it doesn't have phosphorus in it? Yeah, so this one here is 10, 0, 10. So the middle number is phosphorus. Okay. So zero means it's 0% phosphorus. Right. So we're using a 10% nitrogen, 0% phosphorus, and a 10% potassium product. Right, so that, those three numbers on a fertilizer bag, container, bottle, whatever, when it, those three numbers are nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Always, always, always. yep. yep. Um, and so this, this works really good. It's, um, it's a very efficient way to fertilize uh, your plants. Um, and uh, a lot of folks are doing it on small farms and even in, in homesteads and in backyards. Right. So in addition to phosphorus um, precipitating in these systems and causing problems that way, and many of our soils having enough phosphorus, mm -hmm. um, are there other problems with phosphorus use in the landscape? Yeah, if, if you have too much phosphorus in the soil, um, phosphorus stays in the soil. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't uh, move readily in the soil like our other uh, nutrients. Um, and so you can get some uh, phosphorus toxicities. More so than a toxicity, it impedes other nutrients from being taken up. Okay. Um, and then phosphorus is not a good thing to have excess phosphorus in our environment. Yeah, it, it can cause problems, particularly in waterways, uh, if there's too much phosphorus making us leaching out of landscapes and moving into to water bodies and, Correct. and creeks and that sort of thing. Well, that's really interesting. Anything else folks should know if they wanted to give this a shot? Yeah, just, just let us know. We can help you um, set one of these up. Um, I think the key for these is sizing it mm -hmm. for how big your space is. Okay. Um, it's not going to work right if you don't have the right pressure and flow rates and you have to have backflow preventers um, mm -hmm. by law um, so that the fertilizer doesn't get in the water system. And so right. there's a lot of nuances that we can help you um, kind of um, navigate in this process. But you know, once, once you get one of these set up, I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, and they're fairly inexpensive mm -hmm. because they last a long time. So a setup okay. like this will be a couple hundred dollars. Okay, great. Well, Zach, thank you very much. Really interesting information that hopefully folks can use out there. And uh, I might give it a shot at my house. Absolutely.